Hi there once again and welcome to another Espresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is the fifth in the series of Espresso Nuts and Bolts tutorials. And in this one we're going to be looking at Espresso's hidden electric motor, which is another of the preset nodes. That's what we're going to be about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. So on the screen we've got what we might be referring to as a parabolic dish and if we turn it in its rotation H it will of course rotate because I've got everything grouped into a null. That's as simple as that so let's just undo that bring it back to its start position and what I'll do here is just select my null and I'm going to give this the Espresso tag. So I'll bring that in we've got our Espresso editor open and we can start looking at how to do this. So in our system presets, we come down to animation and time. And in here, we've got a rotate null. Now, this is the hidden electric motor, actually. Uh, so let's just take a look at this and see what's going on. So we've got two inputs and we can we can add inputs, but there's no real need to. Similarly, we can add outputs, but again, we don't need to at all. We don't need to touch this whatsoever. So what we've got here then is one divided by S. What this is, you can just think of this as the speed controller. That's what this is. And beneath it, we've got an offset. And that's exactly what it says on the tin. It just literally allows you to offset the starting position of whatever you're using this node to rotate. And at the output stage, we've got rotation. And this is in radians. So we don't need to worry about converting degrees to radians or anything like that we can simply plug it straight into something so if we bring in our null and we say coordinates rotation rotation h we can then connect this up and now we can use it if we just run the timeline and it will do the job so there we go it's working perfectly at the moment there's a jump at the loop point which you won't want easy enough to stop that from happening. At the moment we've got our speed controller set to 0.5. If we set this to 0.33 that will solve the problem and now it will rotate perfectly. Of course it depends how many frames you've got on your timeline but if you think that 90 frames equates to 0.33 you can use multiples. So 180 of course is going to be 0.66, 270, 0.99. And again, your offset here, as I say, what we can do with that, if we didn't want our dish to start where it is here, we can just put a value in here. So one moves it by a fair few degrees, but if we can say 0.1 if we wish, or any, in fact, any number. So you're not restricted whatsoever. We'll just put that back to zero for what it is. So that's it. That's the electric motor that's hidden away in the animation and time presets here. And of course, the thing about this one is that it's not dynamic, which is great. I mean, we do have another motor which is dynamic. But the point about that one is that anything it plugs into has to also be dynamic in order for it to work. This works with non-dynamic objects. So if you ever need something like this, then that's where it is for you. And of course, it doesn't require any keyframes. because It just takes its time from the timeline and it just works. So it's quite a useful little node to have in your toolbox. So that's that's really nice. What we'll do if we just get rid of all of this, in fact, what I'll do, I'll just get rid of the bits and pieces inside the null. So we've still got the null and that will still rotate if we play the timeline. But what we'll do is remove this from here and just take the null away from the node editor. And we'll bring in a couple of cog wheels. So we'll copy this one as so we've got two cogs there. First one, we'll go into our inlay here and we'll say we like spokes. And in our second cog wheel here, we'll make this a lot smaller. So in our teeth, what we'll do is say five teeth and that makes it a lot smaller for us without us having to touch anything. Move this over here and place this in the correct position and then we can think about working with an offset in here so in the orientation we can 
change the large cog there and just move this into position. Okay, so that's all good. So I'm going to take my small cog here and we'll call this drive driver and we'll call this larger cog driven. And then our driver here, again, my rotation, I can plumb into there, but this time it's not going to be rotation H, it will be rotation B. So coordinates, rotation, rotation B. And if we run the timeline, we're running that and it's running in an anti-clockwise direction, which is good. So it's running anti-clockwise. So what we're going to do next is get ourselves a range mapper. Calculate range mapper. And again, here we want coordinates, rotation, rotation B at the output. So we've got those set up. And we can plumb this straight in here because we're going to say in our range mapper that we're going to use degrees as the input. And we'll also do the same at the output so that we don't have to do anything special. Now we've got 0 to 360 in here. Now obviously we've got 20 teeth in our large cog, 5 in our small cog. So 20 divided by 5 is 4, 360 divided by 4 is 90. So 90 degrees is going to be the output range because we want our cog here to rotate four times and this one to rotate once when this is rotated four times. All we then need to do is bring in our driven cog, connect this up, coordinates rotation, rotation B. And now if we run our timeline, all things being fair, it works. But of course, the last thing we've got to do is in our range mapper here, we actually want minus 90. And now it should work. And it does, works beautifully. So you can see how easy it is to set this stuff up and, and just run the timeline and your motor will do, or more precisely, your rotate node to give it its proper name. Will just work. And it's all great. So that's one to bear in mind, another one for your arsenal. And that about completes this tutorial. It's only a simple one and quite a fast one, this one. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's all there for you. And uh, you just say 100% there, that's better. Right, okay, great. So everything is there. You can see how this works. No keyframes needed, and it's all really nice. So that about completes this tutorial, and hopefully, as always, it's been useful to you, and you've learned something new that you can use in your own projects. And if you have enjoyed it, and it's been worthwhile, then please give the video a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And of course, leave a comment, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, please, please share the video because all of this good stuff helps to keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that about wraps this one up. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.